Okay, and welcome to a Race Hour Extra podcast brought to you uh, by our friends at Gamblecast. They are the gambling podcast for everybody from gambling.com. It's me, Dean Ryan, usual host of the Race Hour, but uh, I'm delighted to say I've got Jessica Lamb with me. Jessica, how are you? I'm not too bad. I've had a busy week of Cheltenham Stable Tours, and I think that's what we're going to talk about. Absolutely is what we're going to talk about. We didn't have enough time to fit this into the normal Race Hour podcast because there's a load of blathering idiots on that one. But on this one, um, I've brought an expert along. Now, Jess, you spent some time, I think, Nikki Henderson's, Willie Mullins and Gordon Elliott's yard this week. Yeah, absolutely. Very different vibes at all three of them and uh, a lot of different hopes and a lot of different interests and different horses, of course, different types of horses at all three yards. It's an interesting time to visit those yards, Jessica, because they've all gone through this vaccination hell. Certainly have. And it's very different. Like I haven't been in England for the vaccination situation. I've just been following the news and I've mostly been talking to Irish trainers as opposed to English trainers. And um, you know, in the interviews with Nicky Henderson, he would continually round back to the fact that it's um, hampering him and, and all the things and all the issues. However, uh, Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins, they just, it seemed matter of fact to them. It seemed like this was just something that happened. And Willie Mullins did give some interesting insight as to, to you know, in fact, what the the ground issues over the very dry winter have caused, as opposed to the vaccinations, have said that that's actually more of a factor as opposed to the vaccination issue. Yeah, another problem that has affected the other two yards too. And they've probably just now been overshadowed by the fact that they've got to stick needles into all their horses, pre out them at the wrong time and miss prep races. Um, Nicky Henderson doesn't mind a whinge though, does he? We might start actually with Nicky Henderson. He's got some fantastic horses in his yard. Um, one I wanted to pick up first on, and I know some great stuff on gambler.com already, um, from the stable tour, but Bouvardet, a horse that's won two champion hurdles and yet perhaps isn't considered in the same bracket as a See You Then or an Istabrak or some of the greats. You know, they've even gone through Nicky's yard in the past. We talked about JP McManus horse there. Um, did, did he consider them in the same? Did he consider Bouvardet to be in the same level? Yeah, I mean, you certainly said that uh, Bouvardet would jump the same way as them. He would have the same slickness and, and the same kind of professionalism over a hurdle, which is very key for jumping at speed and getting in the right positions and keeping yourself in the right position in the champion hurdle. So, I mean, that does lend itself to the fact that perhaps he could become the next three-time winner and the, and the first three-time winner since Isterbrack. Yeah, which would be incredible. Let's hear what he said. He's not the flashiest horse. He's a very quick hurdle. He's a very good jumper, like Isterbrack and like See You Then used to be. Um, you know, um, he hasn't been given the credit that he deserves sometimes because I don't think they've been a vintage. The last couple of years have been vintage champion hurdles. Um, he's just the best around. Uh, if he can win a third one, then he deserves to be up there with those. Yeah. Okay, so there's Nicky Henderson. I think he makes a really good point about the fact that perhaps the reason Bouvardet isn't considered in those brackets is because the level of opposition that he's been beating um, just hasn't been the same as perhaps previous generations. But what we've got this year is possibly a Lorena, an Apple's Jade, a Sharjah, a Melon, some of these horses that are also in and the other two yards that you went to this week. We are set up for a champion hurdle of the ages possibly this time around. Uh, and Nicky Henderson is under no illusions whatsoever that this is going to be the toughest uh, champion hurdle that he's running. He's under no illusions. No, he said he has to be better. He has to be better because what's in front of him is going to be better. What was very interesting, though, is that he said even though he was, um, even though he won last year, he only won by a neck, and it doesn't look that flattering as he's only beaten Mellon by um, a neck. But he said that he wasn't a hundred percent. The Monday of Monday before the Tuesday, he went into the stable next door to him where we have a dream lived and found that he had um, a temperature that he described as screaming. The horse hadn't eaten his food. Um, he was clearly unwell. And in fact, a few days later, the horse next to him as well also fell ill. So it, it can be taken from that, that Bouvardet may not have been 100% for that race. He then came out of Cheltenham and usually tough as teak, as Nicky Henderson would say, didn't recover in time four weeks later for Aintree. Nicky mm. Henderson said you could run this horse every single day of the week. Yeah. You could run him seven days a week if you wanted to. Uh, and he hadn't recovered four weeks later. So what you saw from him at Cheltenham was perhaps not um, the best Bouvardet. Okay, okay. And I think that adds to that 
original question was that, you know, is can he be considered in the same bracket? I tell you what, if he wins this year's champion head, or I don't think there can be any doubt about it. And perhaps he's tougher than we all gave him credit for, and maybe even a bit classier than we all gave him credit for. Another stable start, Nicky Jard, Jessica is is out here, of course. And, you know, he's unbeaten when he's had to jump any obstacles. And he's he's kind of been kept to that two mile bracket. And why not? He keeps winning. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I heard him say this week, and I'm sure you know you heard him say it in person that this could be possibly the last season that they keep him unbeaten because they're going to go for another champion chase. You'd imagine most of the opposition will run away, and uh, and he'll get it done. Well, what did you get? What was the vibe you got from him about what they might do with him next year? So the King George has always been on the plate. It's always been a discussion, and he really, really wants him to get to the point where he, you know, he wins that 18th race in a row, he wins the champion chase, and perhaps then goes on and wins a few more races this season. But after that, he's achieved what he needs to achieve to become a legend, to be in the same bracket as Sprint to Sacra, the last great two-mile chase that Nicky Henderson had. And he's quite happy then to have a go at something else, to step him up in trip, to try the King George, to try something else if the King George works out. Um, and he realizes that that could be the time that he will get him beaten. Let's hear what Nicky had to say about possibly branching out next year without you. You know, one has to hope he's your, you know, it would be disappointing if it goes wrong, but it, you're prepared for the fact that it has to go wrong one day. Mm. It can't go on forever. I know Winx can, but <laughs> that's different. <laughs> She's amazing. OK, so that's fascinating stuff. And they, they really have got a horse that I think everyone loves. He's never that flashy, Altior. Um, and that's part of perhaps why they've managed to hold him together for so long and, and keep him at one distance probably aids that as well. I just think his afterburners are something that I'd love to see over two and a half, three miles. That King George next year could be some sight. Um, let's move on to his Gold Cup horses. Um, I say horses. The one I'm really interested in, Jessica, is a big fan of the horses. My bite, it went so close last year and perhaps the ground just caught him out. Was that what Nicky felt? And has he got him in any kind of shape for this year? Yeah, Nicky made a, a great point that the ground was obviously very testing, but they had saved, Cheltenham had saved the a, a strip that was big enough for just two horses on the Gold Cup course. Um, it went all the way around. It hadn't been used since the April before. So my bite and native river, neck and neck, head to head all the way. That's the bit they were on. However, when you have to cross all the other courses that have been used on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday morning. Yeah. It's a massive stretch to get to the run-in, to get to the finish line. Yeah. And he felt that he literally fell in a hole. He actually just sunk. And that's how come uh, Native River was to go was able to go away from him so well. Yeah, Native River, just that more of a bull type go on anything. It probably just relishes that kind of ground. So it suited him just the last stretch. Let's hear Nicky Henderson describe uh, Mike Bite in his own words. And, and how is he just coming into another attempt at the Gold Cup? Could be his year. Well, we're hopeful. He, it, it hasn't been a very good season for him so far. He's been, he was disappointing in the King George, which he won last year. Um, and he was he was fantastic when he, he just got beaten in the Gold Cup last time. But you know, hopefully he's back. We've tinkered with him. We've looked under the bonnet and done a few things to try and help him get back together again. And with a bit of luck, he might come back. And you know, he'll have to be good. It's a good Gold Cup. All right. So Jess, we've talked about Nicky Henderson and, and what might be to come for him at the Cheltenham Festival. Actually, there was one fascinating question I thought you asked him there about what would make for a happy Cheltenham. And I want to hear his answer now. Nikki, every team manager going into the big game has a goal, something that by the end of the week, if they've achieved it, they'll be happy. What is that for you? One. Just the one winner? <laughs> well, you say, we say that, and I, I do seriously mean it, actually. I mean, it, it, and, and preferably on the first day, because that takes the pressure off enormously. And I don't, I don't say you can relax or enjoy it anymore, but it, it just, it does, it takes all the pressure off it. And if you just, if you could win one, the first race would be good too. Okay, let's move on then from Nikki Henderson Child, because you were lucky enough, Jessica, over the last few days to also visit two of the leading trainers in Ireland with Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins. Let's start with Willie Mullins. Um, the Gold Cup is something that's uh, eluded him today. Yeah, it is remarkable. A man who has 61 Cheltenham Festival victories has not won the Gold Cup. 
but he has had plenty of place horses and always had plenty of chances as well. It just is that monkey on his back. Okay, so uh, let's see what he says about his Gold Cup chances this year. I think we have a very good chance in the Gold Cup. I think it's an open year, Bells Hill, Kenboy album and Invitation. They have, um, so I think Bells Hill and Kenboy, both have won grade one chases in Leopardstown in preparation. And that's the sort of prep you, you need going to Cheltenham, I think. Was there one in particular, Jess, that you took out of his comments on that Gold Cup? Sounds like it might be Bells Hill. Bells Hill does seem to be his number one uh, selection at this stage. He's also very sweet on Kenboy. I just think that he, like many of us, can't really believe how much he has improved and how much he has gotten himself together. But Bells Hill, for him, I think certainly at uh, this stage, the way he's talking, will be his, his number one string. He does warn that album photo is better than what we've seen of late, too. Um, I guess the only one of the, the foursome that he intends to run, Ken Boy, Bells Hill, album photo, and invit invitation only, is the only one he really thinks uh, probably has too much of a mountain to climb. Yeah. Yeah, a stretch for him, perhaps. I mean, he probably hasn't gone into Cheltenham. I can't remember him going in with four Gold Cup horses. Normally, if, you, if you've got more than one, you might not have the one. But... He's a man with so much riches in his stable that, you know, if it was any other trainer now, I'd say no chance with any of them because he's got four, but not Willie Mullins. Not Willie Mullins, no. Um, and it's like we said at, at the top of this piece is that he really wants to win the Gold Cup. Yeah. And he made the point of a number of horses when he was asked, why would you run all four of them? And he made the point that if they were in any other yard, they would be running. So why wouldn't I run them? Just because I have one other horse in there, why shouldn't I run... What, you know, just because I have yeah. Kenboy, why shouldn't I run Bells Hill as well? They both deserve to be there. Alvin Furto deserves his chance. An invitation only deserves his chance too. He spends all year splitting his horses up to try and mine all these different graded races and exactly those four uh, would be in the mix there. And he's always had uh, a wealth of strength across mares and hurdlers and, and different kind of genres that he has to split them. It must be a, quite a relaxing position for him just to throw them at one race. Fair play to him this year. Let's see how he does get on in that Gold Cup. Um, Forheen and Penhill will be on everyone's... I mean, everyone loves Forheen. Penhill came out and maybe shocked a few by winning last year at Cheltenham, of course, but he's going to go back again. How is Penhill? Because we never see him until Cheltenham. Yeah, well, Willie Mullins uh, said that he was, you know, he was very well and they never intended to run him after they didn't manage to uh, get all the flat runs they wanted into him um, over the summer and, and into the autumn. They decided that we're not going to run him. Um, I mean, the year before, he said it was a very different conversation when they decided um, that they wouldn't run him between uh, b before the festival. Yeah. But uh, this time they said it was very, it was very straightforward. It was, look, it worked. We've done it. We know we can do it. It He, he did, though, reveal that, yes, it is stressful. Yes, you would love to get a run into him. Yes, you would love to know and you wouldn't like to just be giving him searching bits of work instead. But it works for him and he'd rather not run him and get him to Cheltenham and then go from there because it would be awful to just run him at Leopardstown and find you can't go to Cheltenham. Yeah, and, and end his chances in the big spring festivals. I understand that, all right. With, um, with Forheen, he, he's been known to be a dominating type of horse. It's very hard to keep those ones sweet, isn't it? It's very hard to keep, to keep them sweet. and They just don't leave anything behind. They don't leave anything behind. And especially, you know, a horse like that who has so much enthusiasm for the game and has that kind of presence about him. He did say, though, that before he fell at Christmas, Ruby said he hadn't moved a muscle. He hadn't stirred. He hadn't asked him any questions at all. So what might have happened had he not fell is anybody's guess. But Ruby was very adamant that he had not moved a muscle on him. Um, he was very, very sore after that fall. Uh, Willie said he's just delighted really to have him at the point now where he can train in for Cheltenham and he can think about what he could achieve in the stairs hurdle. So it would be some race because if Forheen were to win again at Cheltenham, like Penn Hill, but Forheen's got that love of the public about him. He's such a fan's favourite. Um, let's maybe just hear what Willie thinks about his stayers chances. You mentioned horses that come into their own, coming up into the build up to Cheltenham. Penn Hill's obviously one of them. Yes, yeah, he's um, he's fine. He was away can't, uh, doing a bit yesterday, uh, so he's coming along nicely. And um, uh, another one that we hope that we can get get him there, you know. But every day with him is uh, you're 
looking at him every morning to and uh, to, to make sure that he's all right so far so good so but he's going to have a few more searching bits of work between now and uh Cheltenham. okay let's move on from the uh, longer distance championship event over hurdles the stairs hurdle and talk about his champion hurdlers and a, a little bit like the gold cup this year for willie mullins and that he He's going to end up with Mellon second last year. He's going to end up with Lorena. I think the, the first time Lorena ever races against the boys. Um, good luck to her. She's at least got a prep in this week. Um, Sharjah as well. I tend to forget about Sharjah because he did all this stuff over the summer. But is he a back number? Which one did you get the view was his main one this year? Well, I did want to talk about Sharjah. Um, he did seem to think that he's now back. You may have forgotten that before he was going down this road and then he had a heavy fall at Leberstown, much like four he had just uh, at Christmas. And he thinks he lost his way and lost and had a lack of confidence. Right. But now he's back to the sort of horse that he thought he would be. Okay. Yeah, because he had, he, he certainly had blips and they always thought so much of him. So I, maybe we won't call him a back number. I mean, Lorena is the, is the sexy one of the three because we just don't know how good she is. She does seem to jump a bit big. Um, why don't we hear what Willie Mullins has to say about his champion hurdle contenders? And your champion hurdle team is still pretty strong too. Uh, what does it look like at the moment? Melon looks good. I'm very happy with him. Just we, we're trying to figure out why he disappointed us the last time. We have our own reasons and uh, we'll try and change those for Cheltenham. And um, uh, Lorena looks good, so we'll find out today. Um, it's not ideal, I suppose, running her after getting a flu vaccination, but um, you know, I, I this race in my head for ages and thankfully we got a little bit of rain last night, which will be good. Uh, Sharjah, he's a nice surprise this season. Um, you know, he's improved beyond all recognition. Uh, he probably he probably is what we thought he was coming up to Christmas or the two years ago when he fell at Leperstown and he just sort of lost his way a little bit after that, maybe confidence, whatever. Uh, but now he seems to be back to being a really good horse and sort of he proved that this year to win a Galway hurdle with top weight and then win a Morgiana and then uh, Leperstown. So we're very pleased. Um, squeezed in the middle of those two two trips, Jess, to um, Willie Mullins and Nicky Henderson was Gordon Elliott. Now, he's um, he's been a meteoric rise through the Irish training ranks from pretty much nothing. A bit of a forgotten about jockey. Um, you know, he's certainly grubbed up well since he finished riding. But his horses that he has this year, it must be exciting for him after winning a gold cup already with Don Cossack to go back with a horse for the same connections, but at the same time, Shattered Love wouldn't be everyone's idea of a Gold Cup winner. She certainly wouldn't. And I also get the impression that Gordon Elliott doesn't think she's a Gold Cup winner this year either. Um, although she deserves to be there uh, she, and she she has the pedigree and she's won at Cheltenham before, which, uh, which he does believe will give her a great advantage uh, going for a big race like the Gold Cup. Um, but he does point out that she's not Don Cossack. Let's see what he had to say about last year's JLT winner ahead of a Gold Cup tilt this year. It's Gordon Elliott. Um, she came home so shins at last, so that was quick enough. Um, touch wood, she, 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 she has a couple of bits of work to do with all being well as she run at the Gold Cup. Do you, would you see her as, would you have any doubt about the stamina test? Right so, listen, when you go into them unknown trips, it's, it's always a worry with every horse. But um, listen, I, I think if she turned up the, the form she did in the John Dork, I think she'd have a great HOA chance. Okay, another one of Gordon Elliott's superstar females, let's say, in the yard is uh, Apples Jade. Seems to have turned out of all recognition. Always a very, very good mare. But now, um, sits right at the top of that champion hurdle market with Bouvardet. And if you'd asked me four months ago, or if you'd have asked anyone on the normal race hour panel, um, they would have said the same, no chance. But here she is. Well, I think Gordon Elliott would have joined you as well. He would have joined you before the Irish Champion Hurdle, in fact, and he was uh, ready to admit that um, the amount of people that were coming up to him before that race and the build-up to that race saying, you've got to go for the Champion Hurdle, you've got to go for the Champion Hurdle, he didn't believe the speed she could show. And, of course, in the aftermath, it, it's a, a no-brainer. It's Champion Hurdle or nothing because you have to let a horse like that take the chance. And he made the point that, I mean, it, it goes without saying that if you want to, if you don't want to win the champion hurdle with a horse who could win the champion hurdle, then you shouldn't be at this game. 
Well, it's, it's a great conclusion for them to have come to, I think, for racing, for the public, and, and actually for the horse, is my view. Because, like, actually, she might have done herself a favour coming into season and not winning the mares last year because if you've gone and won the mares by 20 lengths last year, they'd be thinking penalty kick, win a race at Cheltenham, it's easy. She actually didn't get that done last year because of going into season. It's interesting what Gordon says actually about keeping Apple's Jade on the straight and narrow. Let's hear that. She's in great form. We're very, very happy with her. So just hoping we get a clear run for the next three weeks and everything will be okay. And we spoke earlier about the fact that she was in season and, and sort of the lengths you have to go to, how much you have to watch her to yeah. try and make sure that that doesn't happen again. That's right, yeah. So we'll monitor her very closely and hopefully everything will be okay. But, you know, touch wood, it'll be okay. Is there anything you can do, like diet or anything, to kind of... Uh, listen, not really. We're working with our vet, veterinary surgeons closely and making sure everything's okay. But it's something that you just hope doesn't reoccur, you know. Now let's move on from Apple's Jade, Jessica, and talk about... Um, I guess another one, the people's horses, lots of them will be, of course, because you're at such stellar yards. But Sam Crow, um, this, the second coming at one point, and now pitched in open company hasn't gone his way this term. That doesn't mean the engine under the bonnet is still not as good as it might be. Where is he with Sam Crow? Are we likely to get him to Cheltenham? So I'm sure all the or all the reports have, have come through that uh, the problem he had was that he had a very, very deep lung infection. So when they had initial um, looks at him after the first disappointment or the second disappointment, they, they didn't find uh, the infection that he had. And when they did, he just had a, a week off or 10 days and a, and a course of antibiotics. And that seems to have cleared up. Um, Cheltenham is coming pretty fast. That's kind of the direct quote from Gordon Elliott. Uh, and they are already looking ahead at Aintree and Pontchastown as opposed to um, Cheltenham. They're saying that the next 10 days are going to be important. So I would imagine that, uh, you know, by the middle of next week, they may have some kind of decision and they may say that he's not going to Cheltenham, he's going to Aintree and Pontchastown, or, which I think is probably the sensible decision, they're going to pull up stumps. Yeah. And wait till go chasing next year. Because I kind of feel like they may have regretted ever running over hurdles this season. Yeah, it was a very tough decision for him to make at the start of the season. But do you know what? With a horse like Sam Crow and that kind of obvious ability that it has and domination over his kind of peers at the time anyway, certainly in his novice season, is that, you know, you may not win the battle this year. could still win the war with Sam Crow. And that's probably going to play on Gordon's mind as they run up to Cheltenham. Let's hear what he said. Um, and what about Sam Crow? What's the the latest there, Gordon? There's not, there's not, there's not more to be said about him. To be honest, um, like obviously Cheltenham is coming fast enough, you know. Um, but there's his 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 options in Cheltenham, Punchestown, and Aintree. But the next next ten days are, are important, so I, I I can't tell you any more than that, you know. Has he come right quicker? He looks he looks he looks good, but like until you go and give him a few good bits of work, you don't know where you're going or what you're doing. It's not to be all and all. If he gets to Cheltenham, he does, and if he doesn't, whether it be Aintree or Punchestown, or we take the shoes off and leave him to go chase next year, there's no decision made yet. It'll be have to be discussed at Michael and Eddie, but there's no decision made on where he's going yet. Okay, Jess, I'm going to get sick of talking about people's favourite horses here, but I don't have another term for one like Tiger Roll. Um, a bonny little horse, I've heard him called, but he's also an absolute warrior. Um, it's the cross country for him. And I think Gordon said, um, this was before you ever went there this week, that this was going to be his Gold Cup for this year, which seems odd because he won a Grand National and can obviously go back for more of the same. So cross country first, Grand National second. Well, I think the reason for that is that he has such a remarkable record at the Cheltenham Festival and he's going to be on par with the legends that get statues at Cheltenham if Absolutely. he goes and wins across country yeah, again. Yeah. Tiger Roll Bar is a certainty. If they can build another one, they've got Quaker Bar there already, Arkle Bar, Golden Miller Bar. Tiger Roll Bar would look good there. My personal favourite is the Cottage Rake Bar where you can also get a cottage pie. That makes sense, actually. Mm -hmm. I've never had one in it. I must do that this year. Uh, I, will, I will put that on the list. Let's hear Gordon Elliott talk about the lovely Tiger Roll. Tiger Roll's in great form. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe how well he won on Sunday. Um, it surprised me. Then, you know, I, I thought he'd, he'd finish second or third last, to be honest. It was a good pipe opener for, for, for the cross-country race, but he just showed how good of a horse he is. He, you know, to win a three Cheltenham festivals. Um, I think he's won four times at Cheltenham. He won at the, the opening meeting one year. And, to win a cross country race and or to win a Grand National, sorry, and then to, to come back and win a buying hurdle, like you know, it's if you it hadn't run in the cross country race and you won a buying hurdle, we might be thinking of going for a stairs or well, he's going for the cross country race, and that's where he's going. And one final point on Tiger Roll, Jess, and uh, Gordon's alluded to it there, like pretty much shocked everyone. Twenty five to one in a Boyne hurdle, um, out for the spin. That's how good he is. 
He is just the most versatile jump source that you've ever seen um, anywhere. Uh, he can do anything at any time. He can win over the cross country fences, over the Grand National fences, over the Cheltenham fences. He can win over four miles. He can win over two miles. I think he just he just loves it. And two mile five, two miles, <clears throat> four miles. It just doesn't make any difference to him. Do you know, I think there's a type of bread called Tiger Roll. So that would actually work really well at the Channel Festival. That's my new business idea for 2019. Actually, probably won't get it done. 2020 Tiger Roll baps on me at the Channel Festival. Uh, one final horse there that I think is one of Gordon's best chances. It will go in probably the hottest race of the Channel Festival, uh, depending on which way you lean. But Delta Work, an RSA candidate, um, has done everything right this year. Yeah, no, he really has. Um, and he has that form in the book already as well at Cheltenham. So he goes there um, looking very strong. I actually think on gambling.com, Rory Delage tipped him up a long time ago as the one horse to back to win a race at Cheltenham. Any race at all, didn't mind what he went for. He said that was the one to back. Uh, so well done if you were on that. But he is going for the RSA chase. Um, we didn't see him at uh, the Dublin Racing Festival because the ground was just too quick. Um, and I think uh, Gordon said that, you know, that came from the fact that David Russell had said the ground was quick enough for him at Leopardstown at Christmas when he, he won there. Yeah, and that's like he's got his work done, so they can kind of get away with that with Delta Work. Plus, they know he loves the course. Plus, he's probably going to be fine on the ground. Um, I think he's one of his better chances of the week, although, as I say, in the very, very hot race. So we've come to an end of a ramble through those three yards there, Jessica. And obviously you, you were suggesting that the vibes are very different there. We talked a bit about the vaccinations. Did any of them get a little sparkle in their eye or a little, you know, inclination in their voice talking about some of the other horses there that you wouldn't want to let people miss out on? Yeah, well, I do think that uh, Willie Mullins was very sweet on his bumper horse, uh, Blue Sari. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a four-year-old, and the, the stats are against four-year-olds. There's not too many who have one. Q um, card. Q card, of course, That's it, is the isn't most. it? Day no, Dato Star as well. Oh, I remember and that one, And Rhythm yeah. Section as okay. well. So there's three of them, but not since uh, 2010. That was Q card. He was the, the last one. But he was very sweet on him. He, he really said that, you know, this horse is, is bought to be a, a, a three-mile chaser and to be achieving what he's achieving at this stage as a four-year-old in bumpers and showing the speed he's showing is actually pretty impressive so um the man knows how to train bumper winners at Cheltenham like he really also well. might end up being his only his only bumper runner wow that's tipping itself isn't it if that ends up being the case of course um all right blue sari very interesting um Gordon normally is a little bit closer with his cards to his chest in terms of what he might have and um, there's plenty of horses that People ask him about whenever they get an opportunity. Did he give anything away at all? So it's like you said, it is tricky, but I felt that uh, simply the amount that he spoke about Commander of the Fleet, who's going for the Albert Bartlett yeah. novices hurdle, Love I felt that, that that was the one that he really liked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was talking about how green he was and how impressed he was with his performance at Leprosound. Despite that, he did say that he, this horse has an engine. Yeah, I was, we, we've talked about him plenty on the race hour um, over the, you know, the previous weeks in this run-up to the Cheltenham Festival. He's a big bully with seemingly no brain. So when that all comes together, he will destroy a field. And the Albert Bartlow over three miles, getting angry enough, I think Jack Kennedy will have a steering job. So I'm aboard Commander of Fleet as well for that Albert Bartlett. Uh, Nicky Henderson, I loved what he said about Mike Bite. So I'm quite happy that if, uh, if he can bring Mike Bite back to you know concert pitch for a gold cup um was there anything in there he likes to win the grand annual i mean he does like to win the grand annual he doesn't always do it he likes to though it makes a lot of sense johnny henderson of course yeah no i mean it looks like his horse for that is what's wrong with you um did i get any information no i didn't let's end with what nikki henderson said uh, about his chances in the grand annual uh, jessica thanks very much um, what's wrong with you what's wrong with you Plenty's wrong with me, yeah. <laughs>